Hello, I'm Luca Torix, and today we are going to be comparing the Eastern factions on Rome Total War, answering the question, which one of them is the best? And we're going to be looking at this from two perspectives, one in terms of their unit roster, and two in terms of their location and their position on the campaign map. So we're going to be talking about Parthia, Armenia, Pontus, and Egypt. Now, Egypt isn't an Eastern culture faction, but the thing is, their culture is just known as Egyptian, and they're the only one of that culture in the whole game. So I had to sort of lump them in with another group. I know I could have lumped them in with the Hellenic lot, but I decided because they're nearer to the Eastern factions, that they're the factions they're going to be fighting, it makes more sense to compare Egypt to Pontus, Parthia and Armenia. But anyway, let's get straight into it. Having a look at the unit rosters, we're going to be ranking the soldiers that are available to each army first. Let's go. So at number four, I'm going to put Parthia. I'm going to put Parthia in last place. Now again, I don't know how controversial this is. This is just kind of my opinion. And the reason I put Parthia at number four is it's a very, very lopsided, cavalry-heavy faction. Very, very much so. The only comparable faction, really, in terms of being so overwhelmingly good in the cavalry but not good on the infantry is Scythia. And, well, let's just discuss this now. Let's talk about the Parthian infantry first, which is some of the worst infantry in the whole game. In fact, I think this is easily... I think this has got to be the worst infantry the whole game. Probably only New Media comes close. You know, at least Scythia have Axemen. Uh, Parthia doesn't have anything like that. So let's have a look at the Parthian options. First of all, peasants. Utterly useless. We then have Hillmen. Now, Hillmen are okay. They aren't... You know, they aren't afflicted with poor morale at least, but they don't have good morale either. They're just sort of very, very, very average early game units. Nine defense, five attack, pretty underwhelming average stats. And the only other infantry unit that is melee is the Eastern Infantry, the forbidden Eastern Infantry. Do not be deceived by that defense of 10. Focus rather on the attack of three and the poor morale. Poor morale is really an understatement. I've made several videos mocking the Eastern Infantry. They are a bit of a meme in the Total War community, uh, but they are abysmal, an utterly abysmal unit, particularly on the very hard uh, and hard difficulty. On the easier difficulty, okay, they might be okay, but on the hard difficulties, they are quite frankly just as bad as peasants. And this is the infantry the Parthians have got. It's abysmal. It really is abysmal. The best unit of infantry is incredibly average at best, and... There's no variety here. These two are like spearmen type units. There's no sort of light infantry or anything like that. There's no axemen. There's just there's just nothing. You're going to be relying on cavalry because there is no offensive infantry at all. It really is bad. And that's why I can't put Parthia above any of the other factions. They have no options in terms of infantry. Now we're going to discuss the cavalry in a second. But you might think, well, you can just use cavalry to storm the map. And sure, cavalry is king. Cavalry is amazing on the open field and you can win battles in the open field pretty easily, damn near every time with cavalry, but the issue is you do need to have some infantry in some situations. There are three circumstances I think particularly where you, you really need infantry. One circumstance, the obvious one, is when you're taking or defending a city. The second situation where you really need infantry is on like a bridge battle. Again, the whole point of a bridge battle is you need really sturdy unit of spearmen to blockade the bridge and they just haven't got that, the Parthians. And the third situation is if you're facing an army that, I mean, I think there are some circumstances, for example, if you're facing a lot of chariots, chariots can demolish cavalry because of their sort of spiky bits on the wheels. In that kind of situation, spearmen is the perfect sort of counteract to them, but the Parthians don't enjoy that. So three situations where Parthia is incredibly weak. I feel like when Parthia is strong, when things are going their way in the right situation, they're incredibly overpowered. But there are certainly situations where they're very, very vulnerable, and that's why I cannot put them above any other faction. Now, I really struggled to think about which faction to put next. For me, it was between Pontus and Armenia, so we're going to be talking about these two factions. But I'm going to put Pontus at number three. And it's just because I feel like I would be slightly more confident playing as the Armenians, but we'll, we'll talk about the Armenians in a second. So here is the Pontic army. Now, let's have a look at their infantry first. The early game infantry is basically identical to Parthia. Uh, peasants... Hillmen, Eastern Infantry, identical. The Eastern factions have that pretty much in common, all of them. Uh, you know, the, the three the three proper Eastern factions anyway. As you upgrade, yes, you do ac you get access to Phalanx Pikemen, which I quite like. Not amazing on the whole morale front, but the very long spears are kind of comparable to what you'll see with Macedon, for example. 
Uh, you can you get a bit of separation between you and the enemy, which is quite nice. And they also have the bronze shields. I think the bronze shields is a very damn good unit of spearmen. Again, the very long spears. This unit does have good morale, solid attack and defensive statistics. Really not too bad at all. And a large unit size. Bronze shields are certainly very good. And their infantry is better than Parthia because although in the early game it's basically identical, in the late game they do at least get upgrades to their spearmen and it's no contest between bronze shields and what the Parthians have to offer. So in this respect, easily better than Parthia. Yes, in terms of their cavalry, they aren't quite as good as Parthia, but they still do have some solid units of cavalry. Cappadocian cavalry is basically pretty damn similar to Cataphracts, honestly, it's just a different name. Again, very heavily armoured, I think identical attack and defence statistics, and the charge as well. They're a similar unit of heavy shot cavalry that is very well armoured and good morale. So they basically have their own cataphracts as well. So that kind of advantage that the Parthians so often are uh, praised for actually is kind of nullified because the Pontics have exactly that as well. Sure, they don't have units of Persian cavalry and archer cavalry, which is a bit of a shame. And if they did, the Pontics would be easily, easily better than Parthia. Um, their cavalry isn't quite as good. They rely more on chariot archers. But I still think the Pontic cavalry is pretty damn good. If we're going to say that Parthian cavalry is like S tier, I would say Pontic cavalry is a solid A, B tier, you know? So probably an A tier, to be honest. So yeah, they're slightly worse on the cavalry front, but definitely better on the infantry front, particularly in the later game, and um, with their phalanx, pikemen, and bronze shields. These are the two units that make Pontus better than Parthia, in my opinion. These two units are so impactful in my decision making because if the Parthians had these two units Parthia would easily be better than Pontus but they don't and yeah that's why I choose Pontus over Parthia. In second place I put Armenia. Now it might be a little bit controversial I think some people would put Pontus above Armenia but for me I like the flexibility of the Armenian army. I think that it's more flexible than the Pontic or the Parthian army. In terms of infantry, both the Pontics and Parthians re rely solely on spearmen. That's all they've got. The Armenians have a little bit more flexibility. First of all, the first three units they have ex exactly the same. Peasants, hillmen, eastern infantry. We know this. That's the pattern by now. But they do have a better unit of spearmen. Heavy spearmen actually aren't too difficult to get up to as well. I think it's two upgrades on the, uh, in the, on the barracks if I'm not mistaken. And heavy spearmen are really quite good. Maybe not quite as good as the bronze shields because they don't have that uh, those very long spears, but very, very solid defense. Actually better than the bronze shields we just saw. Well armored, and they can form a phalanx as well, which none of the Parthian units can. I would say Armenia is definitely better than Parthia. But the heavy spearmen, they certainly have got good spearmen. Not these guys, no. No, 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 get out, get out there. Yeah, you tried to get recruited. Nobody else is going to recruit you. Only a misclick. Is when somebody would try and recruit you, Hillman. But I love, I love the Armenian legionaries. Now this is the best of the best in terms of Armenian infantry. It's the final upgrade on the barracks. But this is so cool. This is like a Roman unit. This is basically like, uh, it's basically like a, a post marian you know, like legionary cohort kind of thing. They have the missile attack, which is kind of the equivalent to Pila. They have the a very solid defense. They have a good attack, and I like this because. Both the Parthian and the Pontic units only have defensive infantry units. This is something a little bit more offensive. This is something you can charge the enemy at. This is something you can move a little bit faster than those damn slow units of spearmen. So the Armenians definitely have the flexibility in terms of infantry. And in terms of the three factions we've spoke of so far, I like the, the Armenian infantry the most because they have the most flexibility and they have upgrades. They have decent unit of spearmen, decent unit of legionaries, which the other two factions cannot boast. Um, pretty much identical in terms of missiles, so I'm not going to go over that again. All three of those factions are pretty much the same in terms of that. Pretty underwhelming, quite honestly. But then we go on to the cavalry, and honestly, this is pretty much similar to the, the, the Parthian cavalry. It's not exactly the same. The, Parthian, uh, the Parthians have a few more units of cavalry. They can boast elephants, for example, but they have the cataphracts. That's identical to Parthia, and basically very similar to the Cappadocian uh, cavalry of the Pontics, so all three factions boast that. But the Armenians, unlike the Pontics, have the access to the horse archers and the cataphract archers as well. So they basically have very, very similar cavalry to the Parthians. Not quite as good, but very similar, but an infinitely better infantry roster. So Armenia is definitely better than Parthia. I cannot see a, a, an argument, I cannot see anyone arguing that the Parthian unit roster is better than the Armenian roster. 
To me, that makes no sense. I don't think anyone's going to argue that because they have almost identical cavalry, infinitely better infantry. So I don't see how there's an argument there. Comparing them to Pontus, I would say actually slightly better cavalry because the Pontix rely slightly more on chariots in terms of their archers and horse archers are really, really OP. Every time I've discussed horse archers, you know, with Scythia, with Armenia, Parthia, the early game, you can just dominate the eastern area with these guys. So, you know, you can get these guys straight away very, very easy. And, you know, the Pontics don't have that. So I would say better cavalry than the Pontics and similar, if not better, infantry to the Pontics. So for me, actually, yeah, I did debate for a second about whether to put Pontus at second or Ar Armenia at a third. But look, I'm happy with my decision. I think definitely out of the true Eastern factions, Armenia has the best unit roster because it's the most diverse and they can be good in any situation. And at number one, of course, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise, I'm putting Egypt. Of course, not a true Eastern faction, they are they have their own culture, but I'm, I'm lumping them in with these guys anyway, uh, because yeah, like we discussed earlier. Now, why is Egypt the best unit roster? Well, first of all, look at the size of this roster. You can see this is a very, very flexible army very flexible army. You've got a bit of everything really. You've got a bit of everything. But let's discuss the infantry first. Starting off infantry, you've got Nubian spearmen. Not amazing. Not amazing actually, you know, I would say they're better than Eastern infantry because damn near anything is better than Eastern infantry, but not a huge amount better. Poor morale, yeah, a little bit, a little bit dodgy. But very quickly you can get up to Nile spearmen. If we continue with the theme of infantry, we eventually get onto the Pharaoh's Guards, which are a very good unit. Phalanx, spearmen, 16 defense, 12 attack, and then they have the flexibility as well, because they have Axemen. We discussed the lack of Axemen earlier with the other factions. Axemen, a nice offensive unit. De uh, Desert Axemen are actually quite underrated. Their stats don't look amazing. 10 and 10 is okay, but good morale. These guys are pretty hardy. They're not amazing, but they're pretty hardy. And if you just want a nice unit of infantry to charge forward and really cause a bit of a shock, particularly with that four charge bonus to the opposition, Desert Axemen will do a, certainly a good job. And, uh, you know, they just will. Then we move on to the missile infantry, easily better than anything we've seen so far in this video. They've got slingers and skirmishers, none of the other factions can boast that. And then they've got the normal archers, the bowmen, which are pretty similar to what we've seen before. But they've crucially got the upgrade pharaoh's bowmen. None of the other factions, the Pontics, Armenians, Parthians, they don't have any upgrades to their archers. But the pharaoh's bowmen are some of the best bowmen in the whole game. I would say... Off the top of my head in terms of just standard or just in terms of um, archers, infantry archers, I would say the three best are Cretan archers, Forrester Warband and Pharaoh's Bowman. In terms of the cavalry, I'm actually not a huge fan of the Egyptian cavalry because a lot of it relies on chariots, um, particularly their general, their, their starting off general is chariots and I don't particularly like that. Um, they do move over to heavy cavalry general later on, once you get to a huge city. But I, I don't like my general being chariots. Chariots are, where is the general's unit? Um, here we go, Egyptian chariot general. For your general to have defense of one, ugh, ugh, because that's horrible, that's horrible. Yeah, they've got five hit points, which is dope. Five hit points is insane. But still, the bodyguard are gonna go down so quickly. They're later on general, um, they, they move over to heavy cavalry and that that gets better that gets better but they do generally rely on chariots and I just I don't like the fragility of chariots personally they do have archer cavalry but unfortunately it's camels so I will admit their cavalry isn't quite as good but Nile cavalry is pretty damn solid indeed decent defense good morale it's not insane it's not cataphractal Cappadocian cavalry level of good but it's a solid unit of cavalry indeed. No, they don't have the best cavalry. I would say the Parthians have better cavalry than the Egyptians, but the Egyptians have an infinitely better roster of a diverse unit of infantry, and then they've got the missiles as well. For me, Egypt has the best uh, and most flexible army of them all, but I would actually say Armenia is not too much behind. I quite like the Armenian army, that's for sure. But anyway, so just to summarize, I guess, in terms of the unit rosters, where I'd rank them, I'd rank Parthia at number four, Pontus at number three, Armenia at number two, and Egypt at number one. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that or not. But we're going to move on to the campaign position now. So yeah, enjoy. So at number four, we have Armenia, and I believe this is the weakest faction uh, in terms of their campaign position uh, at the start. Now, just a quick disclaimer, the fog of war is off. Yeah, you, you saw that right. 
Uh, that's just because I want to show you what's going on. It's easier to show you uh, without the fog of war, but I don't turn it off when I'm playing the game. Anyway, as the Armenians, you start off with Kotes and Artazata, only two settlements. You know, that can cause economic trouble. You look at the economy, Kotes and Artazata are both underperforming, minus 142, minus 162 in terms of economy, and I think they should be set to lose money as it starts off. Yeah, you projected to lose 300 a turn, and economic troubles are pretty common as Armenia. This is not the most profitable region of the whole world, it's basically the Caucasus Mountains, you have no access to the Mediterranean, no access to the sea early on as well because Kotes doesn't have a port and Artazata is just in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, economy can be a bit of trouble as the Armenians. This is a difficult starting territory in my opinion. Another thing I don't like about the Armenian starting position is the, the mountains, the Caucasus Mountains. They can be annoying to traverse. It takes quite a while to get across this whole area. You know, just to get from Kotes to Hatra, it takes a solid three or four turns. You know, it's, it's, it's annoying in my opinion. It's annoying to get around this region. It means that at the beginning, because your first turns are very, very crucial to how your campaign will go, you want to start off as being aggressive, particularly as the Armenians, but it's a bit harder to because it takes a while to actually move around. Now, uh, maybe a reason that I have put Armenia as fourth is I've had a bit of a bad experience with Armenia. If you see my Armenian campaign, you'll see that, yeah, it was a little bit tricky. And the reason it was tricky is because actually you can get overwhelmed very quickly as Armenia. There are a few factions in the game where there is the potential to be attacked from all four sides. I guess maybe Dacia, you know, maybe Gaul, maybe Macedon. But this is a, this is a rare example, really, of a faction that is completely surrounded. Now, I made the mistake in my Armenia campaign of saying, oh, the Scythians, yeah, they just mind their business up in Ukraine and Russia and they don't bother to come down south. And they came down south and attacked me. So you can be attacked from the north. You can also be attacked from the west. The Parthians have an interest in Fraspar, so they're going to get Fraspar quick, pretty quickly if you don't. Even if they don't get Fraspar, they're likely to attack you at Fraspar if you get there first, so you can be attacked from the west as well. If the Seleucids decide to get aggressive, they can attack you from this area, and even if you do go and get Hatra, you then have the problem with the very aggressive Egyptians coming up north, so you can be attacked from the south as well. And then you can be attacked by the, from the east by the Pontics, who quite often like to sneak through the mountains from Sinope to Kotes and try and sneak that off of you. You can be attacked by four or five factions pretty quickly, pretty early on, which is exactly what happened in my Armenia campaign. You're very, very vulnerable. The other factions, the other factions we're going to discuss, all have a sort of border, they all have an area which is pretty safe. The Armenians don't. You can literally be attacked from all four sides, and that makes it very, very tricky. So yeah, I would say the Parthians, uh, sorry, the Armenians have a pretty weak starting position. Not a great economy in the early game. Very few settlements. They're vulnerable. They can be attacked from all four sides. And I don't think people talk about it enough how tough the Armenian starting position is. But it's pretty tough in my opinion. But let's move on to number three now, with the third best starting position of the Eastern factions. So at number three, we have Parthia. Now they start off with three settlements, Arsakia and Susa, and then randomly up here, they have Campus Sarkai right at the corner of the map, uh, bordering the void. And the reason actually, this void, is the reason why I put Parthia above Armenia. Because, you know, unlike Medieval 2, nothing's going to come out of the void. It looks a little bit scary, but actually it's harmless. And this means it's basically a completely safe border. Arsakia and Susa are never going to be attacked from this side. It's impossible. And that's great. That's really great because it means you basically don't have to worry. You can expand out in these three directions and not worry about this at all. These settlements are pretty damn safe. Susa and Arsakia are pretty damn safe most of the time. And so is Campus Sarkai, honestly. The Scythians don't, they're not generally that aggressive. And if they do attack, they're going to attack either south of the Armenians or more likely going to attack in this region, Dacia and, Th and Thrace. So Campus Sarkai is pretty damn safe. And I like that about the Parthian starting position. I feel like it's a pretty safe starting position, uh, which I like. They also start off with 2,000 denarii more than the Armenians, which I think is cool. So the economy is a little bit better at least. Yeah, not a huge amount of access to the sea admittedly, but still... They have, they have a bit of a better starting economy, in my opinion. And they're just generally less vulnerable. 
the factions they border. They border a rebel, Fraspar, which is really easy to take. That's basically a free settlement you get gifted early on, which is nice. They border one isolated Seleucid settlement. Sure, with a bit of garrison in there, but the Seleucids, with if you just you know stock up on a few horse archers, should be pretty easy to take out. And that means you've also got access to a wonder of the world really early on, which is good. So that's cool. They also have access to Demartha, not the greatest settlement in the whole game, but still a really easy free settlement for you to take. There's no excuse really for a faction beating you to Demartha. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about the Parthians really. They're definitely less vulnerable than the Armenians because like I say, the void is good, but also there's just not a huge amount of threat. The Armenians are going to be struggling. I never see the army, or rarely see the Armenians do that well in the campaign, quite honestly, because they, they are quite vulnerable. So taking out the Armenian settlements shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, Seleucia should be pretty easy to take out. You get a wonder of the world pretty early on, a better economy, and a more secure starting position. So f for those reasons, I would put Parthia above Armenia. Not the best starting position, because... Like I say, there are definitely more profitable regions of the world than this. I don't like the fact that Parthia is just tucked away in the corner. It kind of feels like that they were just added for the sake of it, Parthia sometimes. And I think historically Parthia weren't even around at this point in time. So they shouldn't even be in the game anyway. So that's kind of why they're just sort of tucked away in the corner of the map. Like, oh, by the way, we've extended the map a few meters to include this pink faction and their bloody Eastern infantry. Thank you so much, Creative Assembly, for, for including that. We're forever in your debt. In second place, we have Pontus. Now, Pontus actually, I think, has really quite a strong starting position. I quite like the Pontic starting position. I think it's one of the better ones in the whole game. Now, they also only control two regions. So actually, there are a few factions that control uh, two settlements, Sinope and Mazakar. But the Pontics expand early and expand pretty quickly, uh, even if the AI plays them. So you should get up from two settlements pretty early on. The reasons I like the Pontic starting position, well, first of all, they have this nice buffer to the north. Nothing is going to attack them from the north. I never have I seen the Scythians take Chers and Esos and get a boat and attack Sinope. They, they don't bother, okay? Maybe I'm jinxing you by saying that, but this might as well be a void up here. You've got a nice, safe northern border. Now, the Armenians could come from this direction, that's for sure, but they've got to come through the mountains. If you set up watchtowers, you can see them coming from a mile off, and they shouldn't be too much of a threat, quite honestly. I don't see the Armenians as too much of a threat to the Pontics. And then... In terms of what is now modern-day Turkey, Anatolia, I think it's called, this is a easy area for the Pontics to take. The Pontics, as the Pontics, you should be gaining control of Turkey so easily, and it means you've got a nice, pretty profitable region to start off with. You've got access to the Mediterranean Sea, you've got quite a few settlements, they're all pretty close together as well, so you can get from one settlement pretty easily to the next, and it means you can get them all in quick succession. But there are just quite a few vulnerable territories around here. So let's discuss them. First of all, you have Ansira. That's rebel territory. Rebel territories are pretty much always easy to take. Yeah, they've got four units of garrison, but we discussed the Pontics have a pretty decent unit roster anyway, so shouldn't be that difficult. Nicomedia, another rebel village. Two rebel villages you should easily be able to take. If you're super quick as well, you could even take Byzantium, which is a good one to take. Out of the rebel territories, certainly one of the better rebel territories in the whole game. So you've got three rebel territories over here that are pretty easy to take. You've then got a fourth rebel territory in Halicarnassus. It's a decent size settlement, but also you have a uh, the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. So you've got a wonder of the world, which is awesome. So you have access to that kind of thing as well. And then let's have a look at the non-rebel territories. Well, we have Pergamum over here. Now, Pergamum, only three units of garrison. And the good thing about the Greek cities, if you're facing them, is that they're so split. They're so divided across three regions, and they're divided by sea as well, that if you attack Pergamum, basically they're not going to get reinforcements over in time. The AI is not responsive enough, it isn't clever enough to get boats over from Sparta to Pergamum, rarely anyway, meaning you can take Pergamum pretty easily, in my experience, just because the Greeks are not going to be able to get the reinforcements over quick enough. The Seleucids, they're the only other faction in this region. They have Sardis and Tarsus in the Anatolia region, and... Again, should be pretty easy to take, particularly if you've already taken Ansira, Nicomedia, Pergamum, and Halicarnassus. The Seleucid should be really easy to be to, to take out. They're going to have pressure from the Armenians, who are going to be going after Hatra. They're going to have pressure from the Parthians, that are going after Seleucia. And they're going to have pressure from the south, 
with the Egyptians probably going for Damascus and Antioch. They're under a huge amount of pressure. I've discussed in my Seleucid faction guide a long time ago that they're incredibly vulnerable. We discussed with the Armenians earlier about they can be attacked from multiple sides. Well, the Seleucids are like the prime example of that. And similar to, to Greece, their faction is spread over such a long, thin area that actually, if you attack, for example, if you attack Sardis, where are they going to get reinforcements from? Yeah, they could get reinforcements from Tarsus, but that's going to take about 3 million years for their troops to get over, and they're probably going to be under siege anyway. So really, the Seleucids are easy to take out, rebel settlements easy to take out, and the Greeks, certainly not a weak faction, but Pergamum is probably the weakest of their settlements because it's the most isolated. This means as Pontus, you can very quickly get a whole nice blue region of the map, and once you've got Turkey, you're set for the rest of the campaign. A pretty nice well-defended region that you can just expand from. You can choose to expand into Greece. You can choose to expand into the Middle East. The Egyptians aren't too much of a threat because they're going to take a while to move up north. And by the time they reach you, you should be well equipped to take them out. So yeah, definitely a nice starting position for Pontus. Uh, not, not too bad at all. But at number one, of course, it's going to be Egypt. There's no competition really. In fact, I would probably argue that Egypt has the strongest starting position out of all the factions in the whole game. They have a really, really, really strong starting position for many reasons. First of all, let's discuss the economy. This is the best economic region in the game. The only one that is comparable is Greece. These two regions, the Greek area and the Egyptian area are so profitable. And that means from the get go, you're gonna have a huge amount of money very, very quickly. Look at this, projected profits, 3,000 denarii. That's gotta be the highest of any faction, I feel like. That's incredible. Even if you do nothing, you build no buildings, you have no farms, you raise taxes by zero, you don't gain any more settlements, you're still gonna be making a big amount of money. 3,000 denarii is the same amount as the Armenians have at the beginning of the game. You, you, but the Armenians, on the other hand, are going to be losing 300 denarii. So completely different economic traje trajectory from the other factions. And yeah, I mean, it's just clear. Really, really strong ones as the world as well. You don't have to worry about a public order too much because of the pyramids at Giza. You also have increased naval trade from the Pharaoh's Lighthouse at Alexandria. So you're going to get even more naval trade. Uh, they also have five starting uh, sorry six six that's got to be a record has any other faction got six settlements i don't think so they have six starting settlements which means again increased tax revenue more people paying taxes across more settlements beautiful that's why another reason why they're making so much money and you also start off with a lot of strategic tactical control over the region as well the area where you're likely going to be expanding to petra bostra two easy rebel settlements for you to take so you should be up to eight or nine territories in the first couple of turns really easily and then the Seleucids are weak as hell so you can capitalize off that. Palmyra is another free settlement because it's rebel. It's just so obvious that the Egyptians have an amazing starting position. I don't really need to talk too much about it because it's just just look at the screen you can see. So yeah in terms of starting position how would I rank the factions just to conclude I would put Armenia at number four, Parthia at number three, Pontus at number two and Egypt at number one. So let's discuss overall which is the strongest Eastern faction. Clearly out of the four factions I've discussed today, Egypt is definitely the strongest. Like I was literally just saying, I think it's the easiest campaign in the whole game. So Egypt would be number one, but obviously, you know, they have their own culture. So you can, they're not really an Eastern faction, like I said. The second place would be Pontus. And I feel like at the true Eastern factions, Pontus is definitely the strongest. And number three, I'll put Armenia because yes, they do have a weaker starting position than the Parthians, but I feel like their better unit roster compensates for that more so. And at number four, I'll put Parthia. But none of these four factions are particularly weak. Parthia can be incredibly overpowered due to their horse archers. Any faction with horse archers can be overpowered. And Parthia isn't too difficult of a campaign. Armenia, again, nice, nice unit roster, so they're not too weak. Pontus, beautiful starting position, solid unit roster, and Egypt are overpowered just in general. So Although I'm putting Parthia at number four, uh, by no means am I saying they are weak. I just think they're the weakest out of the Middle Eastern factions, but they are the weakest of a strong bunch, that is for sure. So 
yeah, that's this video. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with me. Which do you think is the strongest faction? I'll be interested to see how people compare Armenia and Parthia and where they would put Pontus in the mix as well. That'll be very, very interesting. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with more videos very, very soon. I'll see you around.